it's it's not an apple to apple comparison honestly you know when when periods do put you at a certain disadvantage uh, whether it's hormonal so that's one battle that you anyways fighting and when you see these physical issues also it just makes you awkward right and even toilets it's it's a basic needs to be there you do you take the rights right from men from peeing on roads and you will see the kind of transformation that will happen in toilets If you're a person with a vagina, be it binary or non-binary, using public toilets has always been an icky experience, right? So what do we do? We either go long hours not peeing, hover over the toilet, or in the worst case scenario, try to wipe the toilet seat. So when Deep Bajaj noticed how his wife and his mother struggled through these problems, even through pregnancy and arthritis, he decided to do something about it and came up with Pee Buddy. India's first portable, disposable and environmental friendly female urination device that enables women to stand and pee which he patented in 2015 from often being shown the door during the early days to being trolled for talking about women's hygiene issues pee buddy has now sold about 2 million units for his innovation deep has won national entrepreneurship award et innovation award and listed under well known 40 under 40 lists and before we jump into this conversation may i remind you to kindly follow maharani talks on any podcast platform that you prefer just hit the follow button and it'll go a long way to help independent podcasters like me so let's get started hi deep welcome to maharani talks thank you it's a pleasure to be here thank you for having me over yeah it's totally my pleasure as well um I started reading up on you and a common thread that I often came across your interviews right was um, how you have this attitude of you know something doesn't uh, work out you need to pivot or you know you have to accept uh, rejection and failures as part of anything that you start so that was really interesting you know I know uh, mental stamina is a muscle that you work on right and over the years you actually been an entrepreneur in various stages of your life you have failed at a few startups you've exited some and you were successful at some so were you always like that or did you always have that attitude or was something that you developed as you know during the course of your entrepreneurial journey uh-huh. no so i'll say that you know like the great steve jobs said you know that it's only in hindsight that you can join the dots today it's easy for me to say uh, that i have a theory but back then i think it was more resilience is the is is one i would say quality that came naturally to me like i i don't believe in giving up too soon and new things don't scare me so i think it was a combination of those two you know so when i i had the option to stay back in australia where i did my masters from but i came back to do events because i had made a promise to a friend so the unknown didn't, didn't scare me okay so came back and uh, started doing events which took a little bit of time and and then after that it was a good ride then one one day i decided that you know this is not something which is which is fulfilling anymore you know there's no excitement and i moved into carpets and saw the same turn you know right from 0 to 1 sort of a journey i traveled and one thing that was very clear is that i'm not aware afraid of the unknown and i and i can hustle i can try i can be at it by the time it came to serona it became a theory like today i have a four point theory which i keep telling all my friends that you know if you're looking to start something these four things you should be absolutely prepared for on day one and if you have these four and what is that <laughs> Well, I'd say that uh, the first is uh, you know like a uh, thousand days. You know, so if you're planning to start something new, it will take a thousand days for it for before you find all the answers. Just don't be too happy with it. If you've a lot of failures, don't be too sad because that learning curve is uh, is a must. So first and foremost is you know if you're willing to start up anything, even if a new job, give it give it time. Rome. wasn't built in a day and some of these idioms now make sense yeah if even if i look at my life uh, events uh, first couple of years was a struggle there were days when there was no money and last uh, th- years we made reasonable amount of money you know so much that i could even buy a house uh, in delhi carpets same thing happened first couple of years because my wife is a carpet designer and these are handmade carpets uh, so different business uh, had no background into how to sell it first couple of years just took us a while to understand how it's going and last couple of years 
reasonably profitable, still uh, sustains uh, us well. She's uh, bootstrapped, running it on her own. Uh, and then when I tried a couple of other things which didn't take off, the common factor was that I think I just gave up. And now I can give 100 excuses why it didn't work. But I would say if I had just hustled a little bit longer, just, just that little while and crossed that threshold of 1,000 days, Maybe even those would have been, uh, you know, successful today. Like I would say, I would say Serona is very successful. But yes, I know that we'll survive. We've been profitable for the last three years. We've been growing uh, year on year at a, you know, 100% growth. So that's the first thousand day. Yeah. Give it thousand days and give it full time. By the way, uh, there is nothing called the part time. At least in my theory, anything that I've done part time didn't really go anywhere. You know, so business is full time, thousand days. Uh, second to me would be, I think it's it's important that the early age, and especially when you're trying to do something different, don't get too much into an analysis paralysis. Stay away from it, you know, I mean, uh, because if, if, yeah, sorry, you were saying something. No, I was going to say overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, don't overthink it. And uh, because, you know, the, the skill set that you are born with are unique to you. The ingredients that God has given you are unique to you. The circumstances are again unique. So somebody else's theory, because it proves that this might work in his life, doesn't necessarily mean it'll work in your life. So yeah. if you're trying to do something different, uh, stay away from analysis paralysis. If there are early signs, do it. You know, it will take its own sweet time. There's nothing called the perfect product. Go ahead, hit it and do it. Third thing is uh, do not really be uh, too married to the outcomes, you know. So take risks, uh, be open to for them to fail and be open for you to not make money during this time, you know, because the minute you get outbound, you know, like uh, milestone madness comes in, uh, your, exp- your, your trying new thing goes away. Yeah. And fourth and the four and the most important one is keep an eye on energy vampires and, and keep yourself positive. Very, very important, Okay. you know, during this time. Uh, so whatever is your poison, do it. But at no point you should have... Uh, And and there'll be good days and there'll be bad days. So understand what keeps you going and do a lot more of it during these, this first thousand day period. So those four, you know it now. (laughs) Those are good set of principles. Yeah. (laughs) Um, You know, when it comes to positive mindset, right? Are you a kind of person who can compartmentalize? Like for instance, if I have a bad day at work, right? In the evening, I okay, I don't feel like exercising. Yeah. So that goes for a toss. But I know people who have an amazing knack of compartmentalizing if something goes bad at work and they can leave that at work and come back and do other things uh, in their personal lives. So are you someone like that or just the whole day goes for a toss? <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think time teaches you a lot of things. So today I have, what I believe in is that There'll be good days and there'll be bad days. It's like a game of cricket, right? You have six balls coming your way. You can't hit everyone out of the park, right? Yeah. The minute you realize that it's a day for me to hang in there and distance comes from there, at least in my case. Like one thing that I practice is every day, uh, I write one good thing of the day. So I'm just giving you hacks on, on things that I do to bring out, to bring myself out of that spell. Because it's a spell. This this bad day, is it's not really a bad day. It's just that your that part of the brain, which is, Keeps bringing back things why why things are not working are overpower things which are working you know in your mind right. and and you and you tend to get in this spell of saying nothing is going my way while there are a lot of things that are going your way so so what I do is every day I write one good thing of the day at the end of the day the gratitude so to say and I also get my team members to write it so if I get forty emails uh, uh, they they write what have they done today what are they going to do tomorrow but they close the email with one good thing of the day. You know, and so if I'm having a bad day, I'll, I'll open that folder and I'll just go through the last, maybe I'll go to, because I have four years of good things of the day on my phone. I'll just go back to that folder and deal with it. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'll read what team members had to write. If it still doesn't work, I'll, uh, I'll just switch off. I'll, I'll just say that I'm not working today. So I'll just go back because I don't need to prove it to anybody how committed I am to my work. But if today is not my day, I'll just go and play with my girls. I have two daughters. And uh, I'll do that. So can I compartmentalize? No, uh, not that well. Uh, and hence, I have got these small, small hacks, which I try to use and and be in the game. So on a bad day, it's about saying tomorrow is my day. I'll get a good ball. I'll let it out of the park. That's a good way to look at it. 
going back to when you started peabody right um yes it was on a trip on a road trip in 2013 with uh, you and your wife and uh, three other couples and you found that the women were not drinking you know water or you know even like other sodas and stuff like well the men were drinking and you realized that because they have such a trouble using public toilets yes there were like products of that kind in europe at that time but what uh, actually gave you to jump start to okay let's go ahead let's see if something can come out of it yeah so you know i think that the fact that i had seen some of these issues up close and personal made the conviction stronger than what it was for some of the other guys because for every couple traveling today uh, and if especially on a road trip you know that girls manage their life around toilets you know she'd use it at home or we'll know exactly where to stop you know uh, on these yeah. long stretches and uh, and you're okay with it because you know there's a solution and the solution is we've learned to deal with with the compromises you know uh, that that we have in our uh, realm in my case i had seen this professionally and personally i would say a little more deeply so in events you know when i when we do these large scale concerts the porta potties the portable toilets it was a mayhem after 45 minutes you know if it was a crowd it it would become difficult to manage uh then uh, during pregnancy you know uh, when i when we were blessed with our first daughter uh, we had in fact one miscarriage because of uti and uh, and and you know and, and i knew how daunting uh, you know this this whole uh, trouble is and i didn't know why it happened from where it happened so i had seen that and then when we were going to be blessed with our first daughter uh, the last trimester for rashi uh, my wife became difficult because it's difficult to sit and stand Yeah and there was a time when we had to travel on work because i had moved out of events uh, this business was the only business that we were running and you know we this was the show uh, on which we were basing we were basing our entire life on so we had to travel so we had to travel now there's one miscarriage we still have to travel even when i booked uh, you know business class back then which is way out of our reach at least back in the days uh, this was delhi to dubai we had to go for a meeting uh, the, the the but plain toilets you know the the toilets in the aircraft the common toilets right so you just one bad man away from a bad toilet experience and which is what she had again so i had experienced on how you know even those 3 hours for her your bladder is pushing you you have to pee more frequently and you're just saying let us just get to dubai and we'll maybe use the airport uh, which will be uh, cleaner uh, she had stopped attending marriages and funerals alike because she just couldn't sit and stand so when it it was just proposed as a butt of a joke you know on that trip in 2013 where i said you know god loved men more he made our bodies better it's it's a better design uh we can stand and be anywhere and when this friend's wife suggested that she'd seen uh you know a contraption or whatever it was back then i didn't even know what they were called i was like this why isn't it here because i have three women in my life who can use it the whole thing was outside home girls just don't touch the seat yeah you you hover or you, i mean you make seats or you hover or you just hold it in or you wipe the seat you don't want to wipe uh, you know a seat which which you don't know so when it was said i think for me it had and i didn't and I'm, I'm, again in hindsight i'm saying this must have happened but maybe these all three cases must have flashed before my eyes days at events last trimester of pregnancy my mother during her arthritis and i said i want to do it i would love to do it So honestly it didn't really start as a business it started as something that I would say I would do it and I'll see what happens later you know this should come this should be here uh after that experiments uh some shapes we tried and eventually came up to our version of peabody which became india's first standard pd device for when got a design patent and by 2015 writing was clear on the walls that this is what gives me maximum a piece it gives me peaceful sleep when i'm able to say that you know this is a problem that i'd love to solve took a year to exit everything else started sales scaling this company which today is called sirona ig yeah but when you started you started with your brother mohit bajaj and another friend yeah did it ever um, you know occur that okay men entering into female hygiene might not be received so well or did you have any reservations why are we doing this or would it go better if we had a female co-founder you know like your wife coming on board so did those thoughts cross your mind 
Oh, all the time. We till in fact till about last funding. That was a question that was asked. So first couple of years we kept it bootstrapped, right? Yeah. So the first time when we went, uh, the question was why there's no woman on board, and I think. I, I kept telling the same thing. I said, you know, for me, having done a couple of businesses before this, I'm I'm somebody who has a solution to a problem. Which gender is using it is not important right now. You know, I have three women in my life. I'm a half woman myself. You know, like so, all the genders have a significant part of the other half. Uh, and so we never looked at it as men trying to solve problem. We just looked at a team trying to solve a problem. Our customers happen to be women. So in the case of events i was selling to men and women in the case of carpets most of the decision makers were the housewives how does it make a difference who's selling right at the end of the day as long as the solution works but did we get that question yes uh, a lot and mostly from men honestly women never asked me that question you know that why, who are you and what are you doing at the end of the day it was about hey you know there is a device using which women can stand and be and this is what it is called and it's green and i think a lot of it in fact worked in our advantage because i knew having faced so many questions that i have to try harder had i been a woman maybe selling it would have come intuitively uh, and i didn't have that advantage so maybe we tried even harder to 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 ensure that we get everything right and then obviously it's work in progress uh, on the women co-founder question my usual answer was that you know for me i will not have somebody because of gender whether male or female if you identify with what we are trying to do because by the time it came reached the funding stage we said women are facing a lot of unaddressed intimate and menstrual hygiene issues and we want to go after that category okay and we'll do it with unique products so if you identify with that that are you are you are you that someone who will say that yes sir we'll get women on menstrual cups and i'm talking 2016 you know where there was not too much dialogue around this product uh and and your intuitive choice will not be oh well why don't we have pads you have to be that that bracket for me to to fit in to say what is there right now is a problem don't tell me a better contraption i don't want my girls to wipe the seat yeah i want them to stand in pee i don't want my girls when they grow up or my customers to to have these same solutions available maybe with wings extra wings bluetooth wifi i don't know what all is there in pads but i wanted them to have the other option so if you're that school of thought our doors are open you could be anybody lgbtqi as long as you're aligned to this vision to say unaddressed intimate and menstrual hygiene issues unique product solutions we'll stay at it we know our sales will not be that high as a conventional product and if you're ready to hustle you welcome on board so that is our answer to this question usually when we whenever we've gotten Okay and it's surprising that most people who ask you about it are men uh, though i think it's absolutely uh, cool that even you know anyone like you said you know irrespective of gender can um, get into any industry of their choice it shouldn't matter your gender yeah yeah you know it took about one and a half years for you to design you had like 10 variations of your you know initial product right yeah uh, could you take us through the initial phase how hard was it to get the right design i'd say we've been very lucky we've had very <laughs> happy uh, uh, to try friends friends wives where a lot of clothes were soiled um uh, and and at home also having you know women at home was helpful so i don't want to make it sound uh, difficult because it wasn't honestly or maybe that's my problem that i do not look at negatives i mean i i'll keep on looking at things which which worked in our favor we had 9 10 shapes and we still had customers who were willing to try it you know i had people who were willing to try it uh and uh, till date i think that's been the biggest blessing that people who are willing to try some of our uh solutions but early on it was about just coming up with shapes and and being being very open to uh what is missing so you know that doesn't have a good grip can we come up with a version that locks so all these suggestions kept on coming and we are, can can we have a something that fits into the back pocket can we make it foldable can we have it with a disposal bag can we have intimate wet wipes with it so they kept giving feedback and we kept evolving in fact all the range that you see today except for the first three products which were which i could say were because of my family facing those issues have been all because of customer feedback and it's been an iterative process including the cups for us which is today the serona cups are used by over half a million indian women all customer suggestions but in the initial days was it hard to get um customers or people to test it out beyond your family and friends because sometimes your family and friends though they mean well they don't always give objective criticism right true um because they want to see you do well so they might you know sugarcoat it <laughs> so 
was it hard to get others to test it uh-huh. well i would say that i've had uh, good punjabi friends for that matter so they are more <laughs> critical than they are uh, good but no so uh, it, you know first when i i didn't really uh, to be honest uh, my first hunch was that this will do very well in retail you know when i take it to the stores but we had because decision makers were men and the category did not exist back then there were two things one it was just ludicrous for them they would just laugh it off and say not possible you know uh, uh it's been it used to be a joke back then that girls can do everything but they can't stand in p and and i would just use that as a metaphor and say no now they can you know it, the product does exactly this so those guys uh, turned it down luckily for us uh, uh, online was just opening up so health cart in fact back then was the first amongst the first ones to loaded because amazon didn't have the category at least in india so that took off and then uh, you know because again i would say those now in hindsight i would say because i we didn't give up in the first 1000 days opportunities kept coming our way because we kept trying the option to give up didn't exist okay i mean right now also if you look at the office there are white white boards i mean they're like a glass walls everywhere and yeah. every wall has something written on it so uh, and and so what we had was we had a list of prospects you know where where all can we sell used to be there so when one would one dynamo would go away we will we'll go to the other domino so in the sense it was it was something like that to have it as a challenge so and your story did a story on us back then and suddenly the orders spiked up and and they went really high feedback was very good women were far more appreciative of the concept uh then men and then media played a huge huge role yeah we are a company which is purely built on on uh, media relations pr uh, friends uh, helping us spread award customers helping us spread award yeah you initially mentioned that yeah with retail stores you didn't find much traction and then that's when when you approach medical fraternity and you know people tend to trust products that are backed by doc- doctors right sure. that's when you saw an upswing um but was the attention sustaining were you able were able to get repeat customers and did you also get new customers or did you find that attention wax and wane so you know it was in in different audience set uh, the patterns are very different so when when a repeat is very high in a pregnant lady but then after she is delivered you know she doesn't need to use it every day uh, for trekkers it is it is very frequent uh, but the duration between first and the next purchase is high because when you're going on a trek you're taking it for bikers it is every day but yeah but they were using it only when they have to pee during the whole ride you know for women uh, bikers uh, for the case of arthritis they started saying that you know this is too much of a wasteful expense because i can't keep buying this disposable that's where we came up with the reusable version okay so uh, are we happy with where we are i would say that we are happy that we survived could it uh, can it be better it can be 100 times better still many people don't know about it it is and and even if they know about it it's more around that physical you know it's the mindset game to be able to stand in peace like what if i get it wrong what if i soil my clothes so we are on that curve still on that curve where the earlier doctors have taken it but late laggards are yet to come in because it's not a switch it's it's not an easy switch so there are different patterns we've been observing uh, i'd say off late because of covid it has become relatively better uh, as it's opening up people need more toilet hygiene solutions because now it's a portfolio it's not only the stand in pee device you also have toilet seat covers toilet deodorizers and disinfectants the toilet hygiene as a category is is changing so for us repeats are the same customer is trusting us with more options that we have to offer like when she's traveling out today we have the stand in pee device we have the toilet seat cover and we have a toilet deodorizer cum disinfectant so depending on where she uses the the brand or the solution right uh, uh, you know that's where it is fitting in but it's no more about just i mean because you know we are nobody to say that you only stand in pee my question whether in menstrual hygiene or in toilet hygiene is there are four solutions you can pick any but you should have these options available in same as the case in menstrual flow we also have pads by the way we don't like to talk about it they, though they are because they're black they are biodegradable but we are saying as an option it is there you pick similarly with stand in pee so the repeat behavior is far more in saying the same customer trusts me today she uses the product as and when she requires that particular product for you know uh, solving a problem for her and you of course patented the product in 
Um, that's something I want to talk to you about. You know, you are someone who's passionate about product innovation, right? But sadly, in India, we don't see much of that. And and I, and I don't think it's because of uh, lacuna of ideas. We actually have amazing grassroots innovation going on, like Jugad, that's how we say it. Yeah. But why do you think there's so, such a gap? Half the time, though there's innovation, say, in the business, business model aspect of a company, not so much in the product innovation. Uh, it's usually copy-paste. Um, so what is your idea? Why do you think that's happening and how we can close that gap? I would say uh, not many innovations are happening because uh, if you look at the startup ecosystem today, the money is available for products which have already tasted success somewhere else. You know, And on, on that philosophy, uh, unfortunately, most of the uh, products would be similar to what already exists. For innovations, you genuinely need the, the, the word angel investment in its true sense. Like in the US, if you look at it, angel investment goes towards being angels. Like there are people who are protecting you. If it doesn't work, no problem. Here, there is still, I would say, in majority of the cases, expectation is that this is FD that you're doing and you'll get a far higher return. You know, people are people expect to, to back models which are a far higher likelihood of it being a success. While they're okay in their head that if they'll invest in 10 models, only two will succeed. But all 10 are something where are, are, are the ones where at least there's, there's some success story somewhere else. And innovations don't work like that. You know, I mean, for innovations to work, like in, in my case also, if you tell me that there is endless money available, uh, I'd say that let's give Peabody to every woman out there. Let them use it for free once. That's how you drive adoption. You look at Uber, initially the business was not making economic sense you know every it still doesn't in many countries for uber they're still at a loss whenever we take a drive for innovation to thrive at risk capital needs to be available really as uh, already exist globally so if that happens you'll see far more innovations uh, but they need to be given that runway uh, they need to be given that right runway that any product needs right yeah um, so i think that's that's the gap that one there is no there's no capital available and for you to survive on your own, for how long can you survive? Everybody has expenses. You need to be able to attract talent. And that's why there is no Uber or uh, Airbnb, which, which came out of our, our country in a long, long time, you know, uh, because uh, you, need, you need capital to, to drive adoption, uh, unfortunately. But that's how it is. You don't spread a word. People don't know it. And then it is easy to copy. If there is anything that is tracking well, well, there are 100 copies that are available and then <laughs> yeah. it becomes a price war. So many products die an unfortunate death just because of, you know, like the how it is. But there's also an opportunity there that lies there. Right? So, And with any new product to get people to use it, it requires a certain amount of mindset change, right? So, the same applies to Peabody. You know, people need to accept the fact that they're okay to use it. So what steps did you take to aid that? So I'd say that uh, the DNA of the organization is that we've not ever let the product uh, take a backstage and we keep thinking about newer ways and whatever is the latest to, to write that. So back then, uh, we, were, we were still uh, too young, but we came up with this collaboration with TVF. They had a video. It went viral. You know, it, it was called To Pee or Not To Pee mm. and uh, uh, did well for us. Then we created our own content, which is also very loud, bold, shareable content. Uh, you know, with, with Shivani, which is uh, you're in control to you're in control sort of a, uh, you know, uh, messaging. So we are saying just keeping the dialogue going is is what is required in this space. Uh, and and till you reach that inflection point where you're saying, you know, now it's ready for takeoff. So we are still work in progress. We're still on our uh, tarmac right now to say that, you know, we, we've not really got a uh, takeoff stage. Uh, and till then, whether it's influencers, whether it is content, whether it is doctors, whatever is working, we just believe in amplifying that. And we are doing exactly that. Okay. Partnering with marathons, partnering with concerts. Last two years, it has ha hasn't happened. But we were standard national partners with Pinkathon, which is an all-women's run, you know, for, for the longest time. Uh, standard Chartered Bombay Marathon, Airtel Delhi Marathon. They were the turning point for us, by the way. Uh, when they took the product for the first time and gave it to women complimentary. Some of those things uh, have, have been always work in progress for us to, to spread the word about the product. 
Um, so you talked about how, you know, marathons was one place where you saw a lot of traction. Uh, in fact, you were particularly when there was a time when you were going through a low period, you found a major customer through ProCam, right? Yes. Who are into sports marathons and all that. You've read everything through and through. You're a true journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have to repeat anything. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I thought it was, you know, it's nice to have that silver lining at a time when you're going through a rough patch, right? Yeah. So what was that, that like to have someone fly you in and talk about the importance of your product? Oh, it was massive, massive, uh, I think, silver lining for us. Because all through, you know, we were still getting very small sales while doctors had started to recommend the product. But they were only, you know, recommending it in, you know, Delhi NCR region, wherever we were going and talking. Because, you know, like a medical representative also couldn't really e- explain the need uh, as as well as we could, you know, as, as uh, founders. Back then, the quality wasn't there and we couldn't afford the best of medical representatives. So to, and, and what we were trying to tell the world was that this is something that event companies should have as they should buy it from us and give it to customers free and not expect us to give it for free. You know, in the name of sampling, you're, you're charging them for tickets, you're charging them for everything. I mean, this is the least you can do for your customers. So I think ProCam in, in many ways was one of the, the turning points for the product for us to say that we will, we will find more people like them and, and rest as they say uh, god has been kind and it's been history but it was very very big because dj uh, was the ceo uh, dilip jairaman um, and he flew me at a day's notice and uh, he said dude i love the product because we've been trying to keep our toilets clean and there's nothing that we can do we, we keep sending uh, you know janitor after every use but customers are still not happy and we've got the best of marathon runners coming from all over the world this is perfect i'll just i'll just give it to them free outside just just send us 10000 of them and I remember how within a week, you know, we turned this around and, and packed it and, and sent it. But yeah, interesting days. Yeah. <laughs> and what was surprising was that even the travel industry didn't e- initially take to it. Because yeah. the idea of women travelers, you know, solo travelers or even women women's trips are such a rage, right? True. So I thought they would, you know, probably market it all the more. But you again had a tough time with them. Yeah. Yeah. I think because... Again, you know, if you speak to the, I would say the owners or the founders, it is easy for you to sell it in the name of customer excellence. While for an average person, uh, you know, whose job is just to ensure that if they are saying that once a customer comes in, give them a welcome kit and in the welcome kit, there should be a sanitizer, there should be a wet wipe, there should be a biscuit and there should be blue D or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> for me to convince him and for him to then convince him further, uh, how many such agencies are there which have you know team of that caliber to 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 say that no ma'am I genuinely believe that you know our customers will appreciate this product we can talk to elderly ladies also because I was talking about even uh, you know uh, people who go for their p- pilgrimage you know uh, elderly ladies are coming right and and you know uh, they would face this problem sitting and standing is a problem yeah and women uh, you know I and mean, it's it's also a notion that women get UTI. Uh, because of dirty toilets, no, they get UTI because they, they hold their pee for long, longish period of time, you know. And then obviously you can get a UTI even from a clean toilet. And we used to explain this that you know, if a, if a user before you has used the toilet and she's had UTI, you are twice as likely to get it. And because women sit and uh, pee, there is so there are chances of infection, but UTI you will get because you hold the pee for longer. Yeah. You know. So even that was that took time because of I would say people decision makers. We couldn't reach decision makers back then. We still are miles away yeah, from, from how I believe. I believe Peabody should be available on how, how tissue papers are available in every every washroom. You know, have you washed your hands in your tissue paper? Why not make a Peabody available in every differently abled washroom, in every washroom which is there for elderly uh, and, and for women who are just expecting. Airports should have them. Yeah? Do you really need those big installations or you want to make the customer experience better? I mean, so there are, it's a different day's <laughs> topic, but... <laughs> It's still miles to go from where we want it to be. I'm sure one step at a time, yeah. True. But were there ever days when you were going through such uh, lows, right? Were there ever ever a time where you were very close to giving up and thought, okay, I think this idea is not, it's not the time for this idea. Maybe I should think of starting something else. Well, there were certain days when I kept questioning myself, why am I doing this? You know, if people don't want it, if people don't want to support it, why, why do I want to do this? I can also just buy in some products from U.S., for my family, I can afford it. And, and let me just be one of the consumers who's getting the product from anywhere else. But Touchwood, uh, 
good days outnumbered the bad days or i would say a very supportive uh, team uh, co-founder uh, family all of those are just just said fair enough a yeah, big deal you know i think people had no expectations from us so <laughs> <laughs> that's why there was no pressure but yeah there were days when 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 things got very there are still days when you when you look at people copying the products when you when you look at you know uh, when you talk to investors and you're trying to tell them that you know which product can be hero product and and then and they come around and and still question about saying well it has not done well anywhere across why you so confident it'll do well here and why don't you go after this category instead you know which is already a built category the days when you question yourself but then you reminded of some of these customers like that procam day i remember the day i remember which which clothes i was wearing uh, uh where i met him how i met him and then there was another customer who was a cancer survivor who came forward on one of the interviews uh and she said how her life had become better i distinctly remember where was that video also shot those days are 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 so moving for me to say it just can't be about me so you know you mentioned how other products came up that were copying your idea and all so how did that feel how how did you you know did you worry about it or did you like there's nothing i can do that's not my control now i would say that's how i think initially it was also a little annoying because some you know how with this digital media uh, you can publish anything today uh without verifying it right so yeah. there were stories which started saying that that uh, this this is a new product and i said no the product has existed and it's just another variant which is not a problem but at least let the customers know that you know it is not an experiment anymore it is it is something which one phenomenon that other people are also involving you know at least present the story right and to me that uh, was a working point but now it's no more about that here i believe we have 10 plus india first products all 10 of them have had people who launched you know them after we have survived uh, our customers have been uh, very benevolent god has been kind and that's what we are looking at that our competition is us are we able to serve our customers better than what we were doing yesterday last month last week are we really solving the problem if we are not then they will move to the other brand so it's not the other brand's fault it is my fault so they are coming is a good news for the category it's good news for the industry because we are expanding the funnel yeah more people are spreading the word earlier it was only about two bald men trying <laughs> to sell you know female hygiene products now there are other other people also <laughs> who are trying to say there is a need and we feel for it now i'm not asked that question why only two men trying to solve it i'm saying see there's so many others <laughs> and you of course diversified with menstrual cups and you know which is another touchy area yeah. in fact uh, when i now I, i get my products through online grocery delivery right and the delivery guy who comes and gives you know he reads it out from the list you know this and this and this and he always skips whether it's the tampons or panty liners he will not say <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's a big step up from it no longer comes covered in a brown paper or a black, black. Co- yeah black uh, cover or you know so that's a huge step up and i know that you know much of your marketing of these products is online um uh, more than on retail yes. shelves so do you find uh, i've read this report that you know for a lot of female um hygiene products right they find digital way of reaching out to customers is so much better because women feel freer to talk about uh, these issues so what is your uh, take on it how has it been for you for sirona i would say they were they would be equally comfortable in retail if only people who are managing these retail stores made it more inclusive and more welcoming because our executives are not really calling out the product is why they feel it's something you know not, not they are not open so even customers don't open up which doesn't happen in online you know customers talk so freely i mean before this i've had two calls one of them was with a user and and she was talking to me about how you know what kind of changes does she want in my cups very openly everything around you know insertion is a problem taking it out is, is is a problem or what is good and what is bad okay digitally there are no boundaries because you're talking to another human being who is willing to listen so then the gender doesn't matter right so in in my outward communication which is where we are just showing it on instagram facebook insta or, or wherever else far better to do it digitally where the other conversation where customer is coming in and if you have a ear which is a, a ear which is willing to listen it's a far a uh, better place you know to do it digitally uh, than it was offline and i think you can do it with the with the confines of you know your mobile uh, and it will get delivered yeah uh, 
you get in hundred deliveries. So it's not like five years ago, seven years ago, where your you know local Kirana shop used to deliver and maybe judge you also on what you're delivering. <laughs> Today, your mom is also used to doorbell ringing fifty times in a day. You know, you're getting everything online, so it's it's normalized to that extent. So especially, I would say next five years are going to be very interesting for the Indian online delivery D two C space. You'll see far more products yeah. uh, which were otherwise not possible here. And I noticed that you have black sanitary pads. <laughs> yes. Why is that? You just <laughs> thought you'll uh, <laughs> experiment with the white. No. So I'll tell you. You know, I, again, we've got very passionate team guys. You know, here, and and I kept telling them that you know we should not have pads. We are cups. We are cups. Why do we have pads? And uh, a young girl, you know, um, who was interning back then says, "Who are you to decide? You know, if a customer is coming on the website." So then the question to me was. uh i'd ha- i'd launched tampons with applicator we were the first ones to at least start advocating use of them why back then ob was the only tampon yeah. which is analog which is digital and uh, we came up with uh, tampons with applicator we came up with cups to say give them other options and all around i've been saying you know pads extra large with wings bluetooth wifi whatever i just said earlier also why we don't want to do pads we want to tell them that there are other options pads they already have So she said, "No. Uh, what? What? What does this pad industry mean?" And we spoke to a few customers, and while others said that you know I get rashes and you know environmental friendly wasn't to be honest top on cards as a problem statement. Okay. So we said what we need to solve is it should not give rashes, and because our commitment to ourselves was to solve unaddressed issues, we said let's pick it up from the other end of the spectrum. There were some girls who didn't want to see blood, and I said, "Yeah, well, why are pads only white?" you know it it can be other colors but because it was more of a you know cup company we said we'll do black we will we'll, we will we'll, if if somebody's watch let them say it's a stupid idea but let them know that there's a company that does stupid stuff <laughs> so that's why black it also solves problem for a few girls who don't want to see um, who are, who are now comfortable with their cycle and don't want to see perhaps blood it b- works a disadvantage for them who want to monitor their blood was it received well yes and no <laughs> because for for some customers they couldn't see the flow for the ones who could see the flow there are ardent fans uh, the ones who don't want to see the blood there are ardent fans uh, but majority are used to using white pants uh, so we thought fair enough we'll introduce other colors but the ones who are who are fine with the product they love the product okay but it's it's a it's a very stock split like in the case of peabody we never had customers who said they don't like the product there are people who said i will use it and there are people who said i will not use it but they were happy with the innovation they were happy with the introduction of the product in the case of black pads you had people who say i will never use it <laughs> and i have people who will be like i will never use a white pad they're two stock ends you know who are like <laughs> but it's good you're still selling it so it means there is the uh, you know so, yeah, yeah. yeah we can sell fair, a lot more if we come up with white in fact yesterday i was talking to a marketplace they said why are you not having white and i said because they already exist it's not relevant for us okay you know, you had mentioned how when you were covered by a news outlet bbc right they had run an english and then one in hindi yeah and you got rave reviews for your english thing and for your hindi stuff you know you trolled badly <laughs> so did you do you still face that for you know they talked about you know why you're changing the culture and all that stuff yeah well <laughs> you have read fair bit about us so yeah i think now i'd say that uh, not as much but back in you know like 5 years ago it was something which was really really new you know um, at least for the product that indian women uh, can stand in be and it the article also said uh, you know you apna shaucharya apne bag mein leke chal sakti hai mahilaye it had stuff like that you know that you could khade uh, okay pee kar sakte ho all that hindi written and uh, yeah yeah delhi punjabi boy and i believe i know all the cuss words that are there in the word dictionary uh, but i got some really interesting ones yeah so did it impact us no i was in fact it's a joke for me i i love it <laughs> that there were there were some because you know none of them was again a, a lady didn't say one bad thing they they just in fact there were women there were customers who came to our rescue and who said that you know solve the problem we will not buy the product and i also said it to those trolls you know saying that i don't want to sell this product to say that in dirty toilets use it fix the damn toilets and i don't want to sell yeah it will then and they said then what is your business moat and i said my business then is for pregnant ladies and for those with arthritis they'll continue to use it my my intent is not to say that you know make it available at 
uh, clean toilets. You fix the toilets. My customers are happy. I'm out of the market. I'm happy with that. But till then, don't give me your opinion that, you know, uh, it is against tradition and uh, your mother and your sister and your daughter and blah, 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 whatever they said. And I said, I'll get them to use it. You don't like it? Because so far, it was a territory of these so-called uh, the, the pseudo uh, fanatics were used to saying, you know, only men can do it. Yeah. And walls were entitled to only as their pride possessions. We took it away. No? So we said, now next time you're peeing, a girl will come and stand right next to you and pee on the road. <laughs> so don't do it. <laughs> I know. It's, it's really sad that something just as a woman standing and peeing and having that freedom can irk some people so much. Yeah, yeah it was mind-boggling. And, you know, you have outreach programs, right? You, yes. you know, you've taken your products to sex workers and underprivileged girls. Do you face this kind of hostility still? Or are they more curious now? Far more open. Far, far, far more open. So what we do is, you know, we don't, when we do any paid forward, we try uh, that 90% of the dialogue should be around stuff that they can sustain in the long run. And it, it should not be any way seen as a backdoor marketing. That's why we don't talk about pads. Okay. We move them to cups at no cost to them. And uh, almost either we have crowdfunded it or however. So what we do is for every Serona product that you buy, we take out a rupee out of it now, systematically. Earlier, it was more ad hoc. And we used to fund our paid forward campaigns. We've been doing it for the last two years. Uh, now we've registered a foundation whose mandate is to end period poverty. Obviously, it's a uh, ever-arching goal which we're chasing. But those girls, I would say, are far more open to try cups because for them, you know, for you, it might be a luxury to move or, or like it's still like an option, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good to have product for an urban Indian woman because she can afford a pad. She's fine with it. Uh, some of them are getting rashes, big deal, and they learn to live about it. But for, for a girl in rural India, for a girl below poverty line, even for a lady working, you know, as, as domestic help and other this product is an enabler. It it actually helps her get around her day far better than her than her cloth does, whatever she's using right now. Right. You know, first, she doesn't have to buy it every month. Second, it doesn't give her any rashes. Disposal is not a problem. So all of those things enable her to work better. Those women are far, far more open to, to trying. Obviously, there are questions around, you know... Um, how, when, and all of that, for which we have, like, again, a great team. We have Dr. Deeksha, who herself is a MBBS. She's an MD from Safdarjan Hospital. She's a gold medalist. And she's a cup user, a ferocious cup advocate. She goes and talks to them to say that, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a user. I'm a, I'm a doctor, a woman, and I, I can work far better. So those programs I've seen have had women who've come back and taken it for their doc daughters. While here, we are still thinking, you know, should we give it to our girls or not give it to our girls? So response has been very good. And we talk to them about cups only right now to be honest okay uh, because i believe that i don't want to give them a product which they have to buy again so we can take them take the peabody to them but it's not that big a problem you know i'm saying you're using whatever you're using but this is something that is limiting your day-to-day -day activity even in school or in college or when you're going to work yeah far more open yeah and how do you cover this last mile have you hired women to you know go and uh, talk to them so we are a work in progress organization, uh, you know, so uh, every quarter there is a, there's a new strategy uh, that we're trying to do with an intent of saying the work should get done. So latest one at our end is that we, like I said, we just registered a foundation to say, let it be separate. Let us not mix two things, you know, so that we've hired people there whose job is to find NGOs who are already working on ground. And we can say we can be the knowledge partner and the cup partner. We can give you these two things and we can give you monitoring frameworks. Okay. Uh, in cases where we have direct access, our team goes and we talk to them. So, so, so far, last year, about 10,000 lives were impacted through our paid forward campaigns. Uh, and uh, they're all, in, I would say 90% of the cases, either the core team was there physically or at least now COVID uh, was a little bit digital also. Uh, but otherwise, the team is there. So, we're trying both the models. But we are open to NGOs who are working in this space to come forward. We are happy to give them the knowledge. We are even happy to give the product. If, if it is there within our, our, our budget, uh, if it's more than that, we are happy to speak to CSR funds and raise that money and give the cups to you at no cost. But we need legit uh, NGOs, which we are now building a network of. So it's a hybrid model. Okay. Do you also factor in, uh, you know, people with disabilities or transgender people? Now, yes, it's, 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 it's on cards. We've, we've tried again, you know, what happens is, I love saying that running a startup is like fighting a war. And, and within war, there are battles. You can't win all. First, you can't fight all and you can't win all. So uh, there were LGBTQ. I, I, I got involved uh, 
last year and we even had a, a trans uh, woman working here for a while couldn't sustain because i think uh, i think we couldn't create the culture or something happened because my thing was there should be population here working from all backgrounds right uh, so attempts were made but because that has started now i think this year you will see far more uh, i'd say uh, better communication so we are changing the website to to include everybody lgbtqi uh, community and um, it, it's work in progress maybe by next week you will see the narrative will change uh, because we don't want it to be a lip service so a lip service we've done a fair bit but i would say the genuine work where i can proudly wear it on my sleeves and say yes we are inclusive that you will see this year for both the lgbtq or trans and otherwise also even the uh, people with disability as well uh, we want to do it not really had had access i would say now the team is there i think this year it will be far better you're going to focus on it more far better okay um you know during this pandemic your company has actually grown because you've also brought out other hygiene products you know you have a bodyguard collection right yeah but uh in terms of peabody has it stalled because travel has come to uh, you yeah. know so how has that been well i would say only this last couple of months it has gone uh, a little down and yes direct attribution is uh, uh, the travel has come down and maybe only the medical cases are using yeah the product right now um but overall not even so what we want to say is that hygiene as a bucket is something that you should uh look up to us as and now in fact sirona is growing faster you know with our other hygiene solutions that we have introduced and everybody is also coming back on track i had just got derailed for last couple of months but then like i said you know we're not a company which is into burning money so we are okay we've been profitable for the last um 3 years so Um, the good days and the bad days are good months and they are bad months uh, this phase i think we are happy and lucky that we survived something came to our rescue and and helped us stay afloat and that is something which we are more uh, i would say <laughs> thankful for than peabody sales now we we're just happy that the the sales are now back on track where do you see uh, your company in next few years or you don't like looking too far ahead and take it as it goes <laughs> well uh, we do because uh, we have raised first couple of years we have bootstrapped then we've raised money so you do have a three year five year plan but where do we see i would say to be very honest i would love to see ourselves as still being relevant and growing at the same pace whether it is 100 crores or 500 crores that time will tell customers will tell how good we are at our job will tell but the aspirations are definitely there but at core we just would love to see ourselves as still relevant still ticking still innovating if you're doing that i think all the other you know objective benchmarks will be achieved whether it is revenues or it is cities or its international expansion okay you know earlier on in the interview you mentioned how three experiences it seemed like physiologically god loves men more uh, because everything <laughs> seems so much easier for men in terms of you know uh, the physiology yeah over the years from a perspective of another gender What is the stuff that you still bitter about in your industry, and what are the changes that you're happy about? Well, one thing what I'm still sad about is uh, the the number of toilets, you know, that are still. I mean, urinals outnumber the toilets for uh, women, you know. Yeah. Uh, I hope that changes. I hope uh, more emphasis in is is given on keeping these toilets clean. I also believe that it'll be interesting if. government starts to look at these alternate menstrual hygiene products uh, in little more seriously uh, because it saves them money it is better for the environment it is better for them um i'd say j- just those because it it definitely you know period it's it's not an apple to apple comparison honestly you know when when periods do put you at a certain disadvantage uh, you know whether it's hormonal so that's one battle that you anyways fighting yeah. and when you see these physical issues also you know uh, whether it's availability or it is disposal it is it just makes you awkward right um, and even toilets it's it's basic needs to be there you do you take the rights right from men from being on roads and you will see the kind of transformation that will happen in toilets yeah because that is available you know everybody is like chal raha uh, like you said jugad right every tree is our urinal those are few things which i believe if it changes more urinals uh so more toilets for women and you know government looking at far more you know sustainable products it'll the, the landscape will change for the better yeah 
All right. Thank you so much, Deep, for coming on the podcast. I had a great discussion with you. Loved it. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. You can learn more about Peabody and their other female hygiene products on their website, thesirona.com. Thanks always for listening and take care.